let's continue our discussion of switch applications to talk about voltage bidirectional two quadrant switches and four quadrant switches so another possible function of switch that must perform is its ability to block both polarities of voltage when the switch is turned off and so this is a voltage bidirectional function for a switch we can build a voltage bidirectional switch by putting two single quadrant switch in series one of which blocks a positive voltage and one of which blocks negative voltage and so here is one well-known way to do it in which we put a diode and the transistor in series so if the voltage is negative and we want the switch to be turned off so if we have negative to positive in this case the, the transistor isn't designed to be able to block any significant amount of negative voltage however the diode in series will be reverse biased when the voltage is in this direction so the diode will turn off and even if the transistor breaks down from having too much voltage across it the diode will still be off and it will prevent any current from flowing so effectively the diode performs the function of blocking the voltage when the voltage is in this polarity with positive voltage across the switching network we can block this voltage by turning off the transistor and then it operates in the normal fashion when it's turned off to block the voltage so the diode in this case will be forward biased but still no current will flow because the transistor will block it on the other hand as far as conducting current is concerned you can see the switch is only designed to allow positive current when it's on when the current reverses polarity of course the diode will become reverse biased and turned off and with reverse polarity the transistor in general isn't designed to conduct reverse current either so we can only have positive current and so this is a two quadrant switch in which we can conduct either polarity I conduct positive current only but block either polarity of voltage another well-known device that can function in this way is the silicon controlled rectifier or SCR which is able to block reverse voltage or positive voltage if it's not triggered but it can conduct current in only one direction so here's our ideal switch the IV curve of the composite connection of semiconductors is given by this where we can be anywhere in the horizontal axis when the transistor is off and we can be on the positive vertical axis when the transistor is on so this switch will work in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 2 and of course if you would if you need a voltage bidirectional 2 quadrant switch 4 quadrants 3 and 4 you just need to connect the transistor and diode in the opposite direction to get it to conduct current in the other direction there are examples of the need for voltage bidirectional switches they aren't as varied as the current bidirectional case here is one that is that is a DC to 3 phase AC inverter that is based on the buck boost converter and on the left hand side looks like a buck boost converter where the inductor is connected to VG during the first interval by turning this transistor on during the what we normally call the D prime interval of the DC DC version of the converter here is actually to divide into multiple intervals and what you do is to take the energy that was stored in the inductor during the first interval and you release it to the output by connecting different combinations of these switches are turning them on so example if you turn this one on and this one on then the inductor current will flow this way it'll charge this capacitor and flow back that way by controlling the relative amounts of time that the these different switches are on on the second output side we can control the amount of current that will send to each one of the three phases and synthesize output sinusoidal waveforms in that manner let's not go into that in detail because it 
will get complicated but basically we can build a DC to three phase AC inverter that synthesizes output side current waveforms that are sinusoidal. A perhaps well known converter that is similar to this one is called the current source inverter and we can view that one as being derived from the boost converter. So basically instead of this part of the circuit we replace it simply with a DC source and an inductor and connect it here this conductor has a current which a small ripple and that current is again switched to the different three phase outputs to synthesize the output sinusoidal current waveforms so that's based on the boost and it's called the current source inverter it's a well-known inverter circuit and it requires these voltage bidirectional switches as well. The reason we need voltage bidirectional switches is that these switches have to block the output line to vo line voltages. And since the output voltages are AC, they have to block either polarity of voltage. On the other hand, if the power only flows in one direction, then the inductor current is always of one polarity and that current is what the switches have to conduct. So a unidirectional current flow type switch is appropriate in that case. Okay the most general kind of switch is the four quadrant switch and here we have a switch that's capable of blocking either polarity of voltage and conducting either polarity of current so it can work at all four currents in all four quadrants. This essentially has to be an active switch that is controlled by a control terminal. There's some exceptions but in general case it is active and it can be complicated to control but to control the switch to turn on and off at exactly the right time. We don't have a diode that will turn on or off in coordination with some other switch in the circuit. Here are some ways to realize a four quadrant switch. This first one involves taking two voltage bidirectional switches that are two quadrants and putting them in parallel. So each of these switches here can block either polarity of voltage and uh, the left side switch conducts positive current and the right side switch conducts negative current. So together they can conduct either polarity of current. The second case here involves two current bidirectional switches that are put in series. So each of these can conduct either polarity of current. But the top one can only block positive voltage while the bottom one can only block negative voltage. But when you put them in series, they can block either polarity of voltage. And then the third case is not derived from any of the previous configurations. Basically, this diode connect the transistor up in either direction as appropriate to conduct in the right direction and when the transistor is off, the switch network will block either polarity of voltage. The most commonly used version here when we need a four quadrant switch is the first one. And the real reason for that has to do with how we coordinate the switching, turning off one four quadrant switch and turning on the next one. It's easier to coordinate that switching with this network than with the other two. But that's beyond the scope of this lecture. Just to give an example, here is a well-known converter that uses four quadrant switches. This is called a matrix converter and it converts three-phase AC into three-phase AC of a different frequency and voltage. And basically it takes nine four quadrant switches these switches are able to produce output voltage waveforms, these three nodes here, that are different combinations of the input voltage, the three phase input voltage. And by pulse width modulated or quickly switching these devices, we can actually make the average values of these output voltage waveforms be controlled in and so we can actually synthesize switch waveforms here whose low frequency components have a different frequency and amplitude than the input. 
these require four quadrant switches because the switches have to block the line to line AC input voltage which is AC and they have to conduct the three phase AC output current which is also AC so we need the most general type of four quadrant switch this is a pretty interesting converter but it takes some extended time to understand how to control these switches and synthesize the waveforms and it, it can get pretty complicated okay next is about synchronous rectifiers we discussed the idea that a MOSFET is a inherently a current bidirectional switch and this property can be used in what is called a synchronous rectifier application where we replace a diode with a MOSFET and take advantage of this reverse current capability so if we need a single quadrant switch that turns out to be diode type characteristic what we can do is take the diode in this polarity and replace it with a MOSFET here in which the current goes what is normally considered backwards from source to drain instead from the normal drain to source so with a MOSFET connected backwards it's IV instantaneously instantaneous characteristic looks like this basically I've just flipped the voltage axis because in fact I flipped both axes because we've connected the MOSFET backwards and what we do is we take advantage of this part of the instantaneous IV characteristic to get a characteristic that works like a diode now to get this to happen you have you need to have a control circuit that drives a gate as needed to make the MOSFET turn on and off when the diode would have turned on and off but we can build a circuit to do that and get the MOSFET to work like a diode now why would we want to do that well the application of this is the original application was in low voltage computer power supplies and the trend for decades and computer power supplies has been that the voltage goes down and the current goes up as time passes and we now have processor chips w with gate lengths of tens of nanometers and what happened when the gate lengths are scaled down is that the voltage of the power supply has to scale down as well at the same time we're increasing the number of transistors on the chip with, which makes the current go up and so what's happened in the computer business is that we need power supplies that are a fraction of a volt and tens of amps or hundreds of amps even depending on the size of the system so how do we build a converter that can operate with high efficiency and produce such low voltages and high currents? Well, in the previous lecture, we looked at modeling these converters and what we found that the diode forward voltage drop appeared in our model and was a source of conduction loss. And so if we have a diode with a forward voltage drop, just to pick a round number, one volt and our output voltage is less than a volt then we're going to have a lot of power loss in the diode and nowadays the diode power loss or this conduction loss may be greater than the power that goes to the load so we don't have a high efficiency system and the forward voltage drop is something that is hard to scale we can't just buy a larger diode chip and get the voltage to go down there some Schottky diodes, low voltage Schottky diodes may have a forward voltage of say 0.4 volts instead of 0.7 or 1 volt but even then we want to get the voltage drop of our switches to be below a temp of a volt to get a good efficiency. So the solution is to put a MOSFET here where the forward voltage drop is dependent simply on the resistance and the current. So if you buy a bigger MOSFET, you can get a lower on resistance and if you're willing to pay, you can buy as big of a MOSFET as you want and get as low of an on resistance if you want and make the forward voltage drop below so that you can get higher efficiency. And so that's what's done. We have our main MOSFET that is a normal MOSFET of the buck converter here and then we have 
We replace the diode of the buck converter with a synchronous rectifier and we basically drive the synchronous rectifier with a gate drive signal that is the complement of the gate right signal of the main FET so that when the main FET turns off, the synchronous FET turns on and vice versa. There's actually a little bit of dead time there where we make sure that we don't have the case where both FETs are on momentarily at the same time and shorting out VG, which can actually destroy the circuit. So this is useful in low voltage high current applications and we find nowadays that even at applications of tens of volts, you know, below 100 volts, I would say, the synchronous rectifier will lead to higher efficiency. And so we find it used quite a bit in applications that below 100 volts where we're concerned with the efficiency.